When you have visited the doctor, has he ever taken your pulse? By feeling the movement in your wrist, the doctor can often tell much about your health. The movement he feels is your pulse, caused by blood moving through the wrist. This chart shows us the blood vessels in the wrist and hand. Through these hollow tube-shaped vessels, blood flows. Blood moves through blood vessels in every part of the body. This diagram shows us how blood moves through the body in a regular pattern. We call this pattern circulation. In this simple diagram, we can see the heart and lungs that are important in the circulation of blood. Every moment of our lives, blood is circulating throughout our bodies, pumped by the heart through the blood vessels. The doctor can feel the blood vessels pulse as blood moves through them. When a person is young, the pulse rate is about 90 times a minute. The blood pulses through blood vessels as it is pumped by the heart. With an instrument called a stethoscope, the doctor listens to the heart as it beats. This is what he hears. We can see what the heart looks like on this chart. The heart is deep inside the chest. Leading to the heart, and from it, are very large blood vessels. With this large piece of clear plastic, our doctor can find another way to show us the heart and blood vessels. On the plastic, we can make a simple diagram of this boy's heart and blood vessels. The heart is located about here. We can see where these large blood vessels join with the heart. Let's follow this large blood vessel out of the heart. We'll draw the path of this blood vessel up through the neck to the head. It is called an artery. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Every artery is tube-shaped and made up of three layers. This layer of muscle in the artery helps push blood through it. We can see that all the main arteries start at the heart and that they carry blood to every part of the body even to each toe and finger. Nearest the heart, arteries are large. The further from the heart, the smaller they become. Another kind of blood vessel carries blood back to the heart. This blood vessel is a vein. Like arteries, veins are tube-shaped and made up of three layers. But veins are thinner than arteries because the layer of muscle in veins is thinner. Now we've drawn most of the larger veins and arteries in the body. Notice that most of them lie close together. The veins and arteries we see here are large. But if we were to use a microscope, we would see that veins and arteries branch and become smaller and smaller and smaller. The smallest kind of blood vessel which joins the veins and arteries throughout the body is called a capillary. The heart, the arteries, the veins, and the tiny capillaries, which are too small to see here, make up a system that circulates blood throughout the body. The lungs are important to this system. As it circulates, all the blood in the body must pass through the lungs. The blood moves in a continuous stream from the heart, through the body, back to the heart, through the lungs, back to the heart. Blood moves continually through this circulatory system. Heart, body, 
heart, lungs, heart. We can actually see the lungs and heart at work in this X-ray motion picture. The dark object in the center is the heart, pumping blood into the arteries. The two large light-colored areas on each side of the heart are the lungs. When we breathe, air goes down a tube called the windpipe into the lungs. Inside the lungs, the windpipe branches out into many tiny tubes, which carry air into the lungs every time we breathe. We can see what happens each time we breathe by looking at this device. The small balloons represent lungs. This tube is similar to the windpipe. This rubber sheet is similar to the diaphragm, a muscle that helps air to move in and out of the lungs. When we breathe in, the lungs fill with air, and as we breathe out, air leaves the lungs. The air we breathe in contains oxygen, a gas, we breathe out, and carbon dioxide, a waste gas, leaves the lungs. In, oxygen. Out, carbon dioxide. This exchange of gases takes place inside the lungs as we breathe in and out. In each lung are millions of small round air sacs. These air sacs are so small they can only be seen with a microscope. Passing through these tiny air-filled sacs are capillaries. Oxygen from the lungs, shown by white dots, passes through the capillaries into the blood. Waste carbon dioxide, shown by black dots, leaves the blood, goes into the air sacs, and out of the lungs. The oxygen-rich blood in the lungs is carried by veins back to the heart and then circulated throughout the body. Now, let's see how the lungs and heart work together in the circulatory system. Each time we breathe, oxygen in the air comes down the windpipe, into the lungs, and through the tiny air sacs, passes into the blood. This blood goes back to the heart. The heart pumps the blood through the arteries to all parts of the body. As the blood flows through the body, the body takes oxygen from the blood and gives up carbon dioxide. Then the blood with carbon dioxide goes back through veins into the heart. The heart pumps this blood into the lungs. Here, once again, the blood receives oxygen and the whole pattern of circulation begins again. The heart and lungs and circulation help to keep us healthy by bringing us oxygen and getting rid of carbon dioxide waste. What can we do to help our heart and lungs do their jobs? One good rule we can follow is to get plenty of exercise to bring fresh air into the lungs. The heart speeds up during exercise, pumping more blood carrying fresh oxygen through the circulatory system. Good posture helps give the lungs room to expand as they bring air into the chest. Another good rule is, always have a little fresh air coming into a closed room. Otherwise, we may get a headache or feel drowsy because the lungs are not getting enough fresh air. An air conditioner or a partly opened window will give us the oxygen our body needs. Enough exercise, good posture, and plenty of fresh air. These will help our heart and lungs to keep us healthy. Wearing loose-fitting clothing is a good way to give the chest room to expand as the lungs take in air. By following these simple rules, we can help our heart and lungs and circulatory system in the important job they do to help keep our bodies healthy.